course, you can't start a mission until you design a patch. And uh, so the first thing you'll see is our patch. We're very happy. It shows uh, the Expedition 3 crew and the Expedition 2 crew there on the bottom, with the Russians' names in Cyrillic. And you can see the two shuttles signifying uh, we have the American commander uh, going up and the, uh, the Russian commander coming down and the Expedition 2 and 3 crew. And there's our ride discovery, just a beautiful sight out there at the pad at the Kennedy Space Center, ready to go. Here comes your crew, SDS-105 crew and the Expedition 3 crew in what I affectionately refer to as our pumpkin suits, very flattering uh, astronaut wear. Very comfortable too, I might add. Getting into your spacecraft is akin to like going out uh, in the driving morning and getting your car, except uh, some joker overnight parked it on its rear bumper with the nose pointed in the air and you need about three people to push you up in the seat. Hopefully you don't bang your head on any of those switches and break anything and scrub the launch. We really weren't sure we were going to launch that day. We were given a really bad weather forecast. But uh, about this time when they uh, pulled the white room away and they started changing our launch time, we realized that they were pretty serious about all this. Six seconds prior to the launch, uh, they fire up the main engines here. It's quite a big deal. Uh, CJ uh, check, checks out the main engines. Uh, he looks over me and says, we got uh, three up at 104 ready to go. That's a million and a half pounds of thrust there, folks. But ain't nothing compared to what happens when the SRB's light. Six million more pounds of thrust. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust. The 4.2 million pound stack just leaps off the pad. I'm here to tell you that's a significant event in your life. It's a little bit rocky inside. As you can see from this shot here, this shot here, thicker part of the atmosphere, this thing's going supersonic in 42 seconds straight up. If you look closely, you'll be able to see the, um, the shock waves forming uh, over the front of the vehicle as we go through the uh, barrier sound there going straight up. This is about the time of max dynamic pressure, also the maximum force in the vehicle, and then the uh, air thins out real fast as we go up. Those solids burn for two minutes and five seconds, and when they're all done and the millions of pounds of propellant are all gone, we're going uh, over four times the speed of sound. Then there's a train wreck. <laughs> and if you want to see what that looks like from the inside, watch closely and you'll see the big flash. And that's the little engines on the front of the SRBs pulling the solid rocket boosters off of the shuttle. Now we're uh, sucking that main tank dry at a rate that would empty a swimming pool in about 20 seconds, but that's liquid oxygen and hydrogen. And the million and a half pounds of thrust takes us all the way to 8 minutes and 30 seconds to 17 and a half thousand miles an hour and we're in orbit. Uh, we do a quick maneuver here after we come off the tank, you see the flash and then we flip over and Dan and Frank took this picture of the tank right before we went into uh, sunset. And just like that, 8 minutes and 30 seconds, we're in orbit. Well, uh, the crew went right to work. Uh, of course, Doc uh, had to whip out with some cheese uh, tortellinis and eat them right away in front of everybody. The rest of us weren't quite feeling up to that yet. <laughs> Here's uh, Pat setting up, uh, giving me a hand with some of the photo TV equipment, and Dan's getting the uh, computer network uh, ready to go. Uh, it's very important to help us do our job, and I was just really happy to be back in space. Frank and his crew were on the mid-deck shocking themselves with that thing attached to his leg. It's called H-Reflex, and it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> but we didn't try it. Here's the uh, rendezvous. Uh, Doc flew us up from below, and then uh, we came in from the front on what they call the V-bar approach. Uh, here's Doc flying the space shuttle. You see it's very bright. He brought us right down the uh, middle of the corridor, and Dan was helping him out with the sensors and everything. Now, Doc didn't fly it this uh, fast. Uh, you know, they'd be pretty upset if they saw that sort of thing going on. <laughs> Here you can actually see the real space station in the overhead window uh, coming down in a very nice controlled uh, fashion. And here's the last few seconds right prior to uh, impact. First thing Doc's looking for is the uh, contact and the capture light. You'll see him check the panel down there. And then uh, he was very happy. Unfortunately, uh, Dan and Pat were doing the docking system, and that took them just a little while to get that all straightened out. They had to extend the ring and then uh, run it back in, but it all worked out well. Frank was down on the mid-deck, and he just couldn't wait to get over to his new home. He's saying, come on, y'all, let's go. Hurry up. <laughs> so uh, Doc went in there and opened uh, our hatch, and on the other side of the hatch was the uh, Increment 2 commander, uh, Yuri Yusachev, who you've heard mentioned uh, many times tonight. And Yuri was very, very happy to see us, uh, as you'll see. Gives uh, the formal handshake and then a uh, big hug. And uh, everybody was uh, very happy to see each other. This is uh, the next shot shows what it would look like if you came onto the uh, space station. There's uh, Jim and Susan 
Jim's going to grab up a camera and take a few shots of us coming on board. You can see Frank's already over there. And uh, Susan may think five and a half months is too short, but look how happy she is there. She's waving with both hands. Now, being NASA, the first thing we had to do was have a, a safety brief. So uh, Yuri got us all together and told us the uh, rules, uh, how we were going to conduct this uh, mission, especially the transfer, and uh, keep everybody out of trouble. Here you can see uh, doing the first few mid-deck transfers that we brought over that day. And it was time for Pat to go to work installing the MPLM. We carried up a logistics module that was full of the supplies you heard us talk about for Expedition 3. Of course, it would have their food and some clothes, uh, all the way down to things like toilet paper. So it was fairly important that we got it on board. You're seeing a computer simulation of what that would look like, and then here the actual footage. Uh, I got some great. Uh, I got some great jelly. It was his first time through as uh, the robotics training lead, and he did a great job. A little bit more of the computer graphics. Imagine bringing a moving van to your house to move, and the uh, house being full of furniture and the moving van being full and you have to somehow switch those two things. And that's what it was like with the, with the MPLM. It was fully loaded and they had a full supply uh, for us to bring back on the MPLM. And that was Dan's challenge, how he was gonna get things transferred. Once again, folks are happy we've got it up there because now we know we've got a mission for Expedition 3. First thing they did was go uh, and open the hatch and I'll turn it over to Dan to talk a little bit about transfer. Well, as Pat said, um, it's time now to, to unload the MPLM. And uh, we, were, we had all of our transfer lists. Uh, Dave Parrish uh, was here, got an award for helping us put all that together. But uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. It's time to really take the boxes out. So we started with that technique, which was uh, one man with three boxes and realized in space you don't have to do it that way. And uh, found that the bucket brigade uh, was not only more efficient, but a lot more fun. And uh, Doc was calling balls and strikes as we pass this uh, back to Pat. And uh, utilized Jim Boss's uh, concept of how to do this, which was uh, really the idea being temp stow it all, get it on the right side of the hatch, and then um, put it in its proper place, which worked out great. Uh, Yuri Yusuchev did say to me after I was crowing about how quickly we had gotten the MPLM unloaded, he said, Dan, that's, that's very nice, but I want to remind you that it's easier to destroy than to create. <laughs> He was right. It's a lot harder to put all those uh, boxes back where they belong to come back uh, home. And this was our first shot. And it, the ground wasn't happy with that, so we had to <laughs> organize it a little bit better. Here's Doc uh, uh, working on the paperwork, because uh, it does follow you up there. But in the end, uh, every single item was accounted for and uh, put away. And it was time to get ready to do the EVAs. Uh, the crew spent a day getting out all the gear we needed and checking out the uh, spacesuits to make sure that everything was ready to go. Here you can see Pat checking out his body restraint tether. And then uh, we're getting all the equipment that we brought over from the space station organized so we'll be ready to uh, put it in the airlock when it's time to do the spacewalks. Here you can see the uh, crew putting on their uh, liquid cooling garments. Uh, in space, men uh, do put their pants on differently. They put them on two legs at a time. So we got them into their suits. I uh, had some good help from Jim Voss uh, getting uh, Pat and Dan ready to go outside on their spacewalk. And of course, we had good coordination with the ground to make sure that all the uh, data was looking good on the uh, suit. And then we were very careful about not missing any steps in the uh, checklist and making sure we got everything checked off. And now after the uh, many hours of preparation, it's finally time to come outside. Um, from the ground, uh, Rich Gavreau had, had spent the last year of his life teaching us how to do this right, and uh, it paid off. We, we want to say thanks to him as we uh, show you here graphically the concept of putting the early ammonia servicer from the shuttle to the station. The idea of this device is to provide uh, ammonia in the case that uh, there might be an ammonia coolant leak from the station. The real trick to this uh, spacewalk was that uh, the teamwork. Doc is flying the arm. Uh, Pat and I are out there coordinating together. CJ has uh, got the whole choreography uh, mapped and planned out and is guiding a step by guiding a step by. And uh, it's that kind of teamwork that in the end uh, really creates uh, a successful spacewalk. 
And uh, there's also some uh, things that happen on the fly as uh, the position of the servicer wasn't exactly what we modeled, but um, we were able to uh, compensate for that and get it uh, connected uh, right on time. As uh, Pat mentioned during the slides, we also had uh, a couple suitcases of materials that we were bringing outside to remain out there and be exposed to space and then uh, be brought home on a future mission. Here's Doc flying us. Uh, the experience of being flown on the arm is, is a really interesting one. As, you, uh, as you're out there, you get far away from all structure on this arm, and then you hear Doc tell you to fasten your seatbelt, kind of looking around for that seatbelt a little bit. But um, again, the, the communication back and forth uh, in, a, in many different axes of orientation uh, is critically important. We worked a lot on that and got a lot of help uh, from our trainers on the ground, too. Uh, there's um, Pat saying hi from uh, high up above Discovery. So after about uh, 12 hours outside, both uh, spacewalks, uh, one, as I said, for the early morning servicer, and a second one to do some cable uh, laying for 8A, uh, it was time to come back in and get a little exercise. We did get some exercise every day. Dan mentioned earlier that uh, we had to uh, go over to the space station to get some real exercise. Here we are using one of their resistance devices, much like being in a gym. Uh, there's CJ. He was able to tackle the treadmill and did quite well. You can see the bungees that are pulling them down. And then there's the exercise you get when you tell the kids to go out in the backyard and play, which is what we're doing there. Uh, the MPLM is just about ready to be uh, closed up and put back in a cargo bay, so we took some opportunity to play. There I am doing a flip, and we thought y'all might enjoy seeing what that's like if you were doing it. Now, if that didn't make you hungry, nothing will. Uh, Susan talked about the fact that we would get together in the service module and, and share a meal, all 10 of us. Uh, it was great the first night we got there, and they invited us over to eat. Uh, eating in space is a lot of fun. Uh, if you watch CJ here, uh, he got a little, let a little bit of food get away, but that's no problem. It's just a matter of taking your spoon and uh, herding it back in. There's another little piece. Doc did a great job flying the shuttle, but he had a hard time hanging on to his utensils. So uh, once uh, that was over, it was time to go home. So we, uh, Dan pushed the uh, buttons there on the docking system to release the uh, hooks and uh, we backed away uh, from the space station uh, first very slowly and then uh, we sped up a little bit as we moved on out to 450 feet and did our fly around so a good time to talk about teamwork on the space shuttle for all the kids that uh, are in here uh, it wasn't just one guy flying uh, like doc said during the rendezvous uh, there's a whole group of people and everybody's making an effort to make sure that the job gets done right and uh, this is when we got some really nice pictures uh, and we're able to reflect on the uh, success of the mission so far and uh, how big the space station has gotten. It's uh, just an awesome sight. We had uh, one more thing to do before uh, we came home. Uh, Pat deployed this uh, small satellite called SimpleSat, and there you can see it coming out of the uh, payload bay. The kids, uh, when we go to schools, really like to see this sort of thing. It was time to have a little fun on the uh, mid-deck. Uh, we're just trying to overload the commander here with these M&Ms and see these M&Ms and see we're pretty quick. <laughs> Dan's got to tell you about his fluids experiment. Uh, sometimes there's a chance to get to do some extra fluid mechanics experiments in space. Here we are with uh, mango juice and red fruit punch, uh, trying to demonstrate um, how it's possible to make a, your own concoction of uh, fruit juice in space. And this is how you do it. And of course. The best part is when you're finished with the experiment, you just drink it right out of the air. There. Tasty. <laughs> well, here's something all you kids always want to know because they always ask, you know, how do you go to the bathroom in space? And adults, of course, know you do it very carefully. But uh, think about it the next time you uh, do, how important gravity uh, is in getting uh, things where they're supposed to be. You go uh, number one right in that old funnel. And then uh, when you need to do your other business, uh, you need to get a, a good seat, get yourself all strapped in, <laughs> and a good body position and uh, seal are very important. You can imagine how upset the crew would be if something came floating <laughs> out of there. 
sleeping is great in space. Uh, all you have to do is close your eyes and go to sleep, but you're not really sure where you'll wake up in the morning. So we uh, take a sleeping bag, just find a ceiling, a wall, a floor, it doesn't matter, and strap ourselves in. Uh, here I am on the flight deck, and once you're strapped in, like I said, just close your eyes. Well, before we know it was time to leave, uh, our short 12-day trip was over, and so we're back in those comfortable pumpkin suits once again, getting ready to come home. Look out the overhead window here, and you'll see what happens when a space shuttle hits the air going 25 times the speed of sound. It literally burns the atmosphere around you. That's what those flashers are. Before we knew it, um, the guidance had taken us down on final uh, to KSC with a beautiful day and a great lineup. And we went from 17,500 miles an hour to land uh, about 2,000 feet down the runway at 200 knots at the Kennedy Space Center and uh, bring an end to our mission. The chute there slows us down. Uh, it's really effective. You can really feel that come out. It also helps cushion the nose as it comes down. That comes down with a pretty big bang. And we're firmly on the ground, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, our administrator, uh, Dan Gold, meet us there. Uh, shuttle crew is real excited, want to go take a quick look at Discovery, our ride uh, to space and, and our home for 12 days. And here's a graphic depiction of uh, the continuation of the build of the space station. We're about halfway built uh, with all the hardware up there. It's getting bigger. Uh, it's, I'm here to tell you it's a really large space station, but it's going to get a whole lot larger. Some people estimate it'll be so big that it'll be bright enough to be seen during daylight passes. It's an amazing uh, place that we have up there. Uh, we still have a long way to go, and we hope you enjoyed uh, our summer vacation, STS 105.